Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer. I'm Reverend Angela Peverell. We're saying our prayers this morning in the parish of Musselbrook. Musselbrook stands on land that has been traditionally cared for by the Wanarua and the Kamilaroi peoples. And so we pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging. On this Wednesday, the 8th of September, the Church recalls the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of our Lord. And so we give thanks for Mary's faithfulness in all things and for her example and witness. Let us pray. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give with thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and for ever. Amen. Our opening canticle is a song of God's grace. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us to be your children, through Jesus Christ, according to the purposes of your will. To the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our psalm this morning, or our psalms, are Psalm 20 and Psalm 21 to verse 7. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The God of Jacob lift you up to safety. May he send you his help from the sanctuary and be your strong support in Zion. May he remember all of your offerings and accept with favour your burnt sacrifices. Grant you your heart's desires and fulfil all your purposes. May we also rejoice in your victory and triumph in the name of our God. The Lord perform all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will save his anointed, that he will answer him from his holy heaven with the victorious strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord, our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are made strong and stand upright. O Lord, save the King, and hear us when we call upon you. The King shall rejoice in your strength, O Lord. He shall exalt you in salvation. You have given him his heart's desire. You have not denied him the request of his lips. For you came to meet him with the blessings of success and placed a crown of gold upon his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him, length of days for ever and ever. Great is his glory because of your salvation. You have clothed him with honour and majesty. You have given him everlasting felicity and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king puts his trust in the Lord. And through the tender mercy of the Most High, he shall never be moved. We consecrate this day to your service, O Lord. May all our thoughts, words and actions be well pleasing to you and serve the good of our brothers and sisters through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, beginning at the 13th verse. When a, month, what, 
When a moderate south wind began to blow, they thought they could achieve their purpose. So they weighed anchor and began to sail past Crete, close to the shore. But soon a violent wind called the Northeaster rushed down from Crete. Since the ship was caught and could not be turned head on into the wind, we gave way to it and were driven. By running under the sea, a lee of a small island called Clauda, we were scarcely able to get the ship's boat under control. After hoisting it up, they took measures to undergird the ship. Then fearing that they would run on the Sirtis, they lowered the sea anchor and so were driven. We were being pounded by the storm so violently that on the next day they began to throw cargo overboard. And on the third day with their own hands, they threw the ship's tackle overboard when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest raged. All hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul then stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and have not set sail from Crete, therefore thereby avoiding this damage and loss. I urge you now to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss amongst you, but only of the ship. For last night there stood by me an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before the emperor. And indeed, God has granted safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have told. But we will have to run aground on some island. When the fourteenth night had come, as we were drifting across the sea of Adria, about midnight the sailors suspected that they were nearing land. So they took soundings and found twenty fathoms. A little farther on they took soundings and again found fifteen fathoms. Fearing that we might run on rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. But when the sailors tried to escape from the ship, and had lowered the boat into the sea, on the pretext of putting out the anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes, and the boat set it adrift. May your word live in us, and bear much fruit to your glory. The canticle for the morning is the Te Deum Laudamus. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son. Worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh, you set us free. You humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the King of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people brought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with all your saints to the glory everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our collect for this morning is for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty and everlasting God, increase our faith, hope and love. And that we may receive all your promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. And our prayer, giving thanks for the life and faithfulness of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Heavenly Father, who chose the Virgin Mary by your grace to be the mother of our Lord and Saviour, fill us with your grace that in all things we may accept your holy will and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of compassion, we come together to pray and we pray in the sanctuary of our own homes during this time of lockdown. May we always feel your presence in our lives, especially as we bring before you our prayers and as we give thanks for all that is gracious in our lives. Trusting in your providence and presence, we pray for an end to this pandemic. We pray for your strengthening to those who are committed to costly leadership during this time. We pray for those who are ill, for those who are anxious about getting ill, for those who are full of grief. And we remember those who have died from COVID-19, acknowledging that only through your grace can we sustain our efforts to end this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for peace and justice throughout our world, especially offering our prayers for the people of Afghanistan and for those who have fled and for those who are now refugees who are seeking asylum. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you gather us as your body, the church, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus. Break into our lives, like hearing to the deaf, sight to the blind, and speech to the mute. Bring form to our chaos, light to our darkness, and life to our hearts. We pray your blessing on our Bishop Peter and our Assistant Bishops Sonia and Charlie and all your ministers of your church. Transform our gatherings to your glory. Perfect our worship to your praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you alone give the peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray for peace in our world. We pray for our leaders of Australia and especially those who are in leadership roles in our health services and our, in our emergency services. We pray for those who work in hospitals, for doctors and nurses, for those who work in vaccination clinics and those in testing clinics. We pray for our Prime Minister Scott, for our Premier Gladys, and for all who serve in all levels of government, including our state governments and our local governments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for those who are in need especially in this time of the pandemic and our prolonged lockdown. 
bless the hearts of the sick, the injured, and most especially those who are dying. We pray that all may know your presence in the midst of their troubles. Grant them healing, peace of mind, and a spirit of faith that looks to you for life. We pray for those who are bereaved, for those who are anxious, for those who struggle with addictions, and those who live with chronic illness. We pray that you will restore their health, hope and joy. And we give thanks for those who bring comfort and care and healing. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers and those whose names and needs are known only to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless those who are sick and dying, that they will always know your presence in the midst of their trouble. Grant them healing, peace of mind and spirit, and a faith that looks to you for life. We remember with thanksgiving those who have been known, that those who have been known to us, who we have loved and lost. And we remember those who have died recently and those whose year's anniversary occurs at about this time. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. God of love, bring your radical and scandalous healing and peace into our midst. Touch us all with your love. And we ask all of this in the name of the one who calls us forward, Jesus Christ our Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony that with one another and in accord with Jesus Christ, we may with one voice glorify our God and Father. Amen.